Hi everyone, uh, how's it going? Uh, thanks for joining us uh, today and sorry for my hat. I desperately need a haircut. So hopefully after the MCO, uh, I'm gonna take care of it. So uh, my name is Amir. Uh, let me just like uh, share my uh, slide as well for you guys. Okay, so uh, in full screen. Yes, in full screen. Yeah, all right, all right, so that's that's great. So, uh, okay, so uh, first uh, I want to take a quick uh, moment and thank you, iTrain, uh, for having me on. Uh, just a, a little bit of uh, information about me. Uh, I am uh, an entrepreneur like many of you in this session. I uh, uh, founded a startup called uh, Currency. Uh, we are a, a fintech company serving banks and uh, license money changers to actually uh, digi digitize uh, their currency exchange services for the customers. We help them with uh, customer acquisition to traditional marketing channels, different marketplaces. Uh, we won uh, multiple awards. You can check us uh, out through our website, uh, currency.com. So we recently expanded to Indonesia and in the next few days, we'll be launching our services there uh, as well. Uh, I am also a, a co-founder uh, at a media buying agency called Beepool. Uh, we help brands to uh, effectively advertise their services and products on Facebook and Instagram, Google, YouTube, etc. Uh, I have also been working with iTrain for a couple of years now as a consultant and trainer. Uh, I have been uh, running certified digital marketing specialist uh, uh, classes uh, for iTrain uh, since the inception of the course in 2018. Uh, and since then, we have uh, trained uh, hundreds of uh, digital marketing specialists in Malaysia and across the region. So uh, whatever you know, I teach uh, in my classes, uh, seated in my you know, own experience uh, running multiple businesses and a marketing agency owner through which, you know, I've served uh, many clients, burned a lot of money in the process, you know, as well. So, okay, so I'm also certified in different areas of digital marketing, uh, you know, as well. And uh, in this webinar, uh, I'll be sharing some of, uh, some very uh, clear, and easy action items that you can uh, easily implement in your uh, uh, website right away, uh, hopefully. So, and here are some of my success stories that I can, you know, openly share with you guys. Uh, so, these are the example of example of what we have been able to achieve in currency, uh, being able to appear in the first page of Google search results for, you know, for relevant search queries. Uh, outranking big names, you know, in the industry. So, and you know, the travel industry is very competitive when it comes to search engine optimization. So, uh, okay, uh, enough about me. Let's just uh, get us started. Okay, so uh, let's 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 start with the definition of SEO. So, uh, SEO is the process of uh, optimizing your web pages to be discovered through search engine uh, uh, organic search results. So during this uh, tutorial, I'd be focusing primarily on Google and how Google works uh, to rank you know, your page since you know, since the world's largest uh, search engine. And uh, as, you, as some of you may know, uh, it, has like, uh, it has like over 90%, uh, it actually holds over 91% of the overall search engine market uh, as of March 2020. Uh, in Malaysia, Google search engine market share is even bigger, 98% plus. So, so that is like the kind of you know, scale that we're talking about. So now, now the question is, uh, why should you, you know, why should we incorporate SEO into our marketing strategies? So there are three major uh, benefits of uh, SE, SEO that actually faci uh, uh, that, uh, fas facilitates, you know, digital marketers from all over the world. So 
The first one is uh, traffic from your SEO activities, uh, your SEO effort is, is free. So uh, your, your traffic from SEO is consistent as soon as you appear, uh, uh, you, you get a high rank in the Google search result. And finally, you have the opportunity to reach a massive audience you won't have access otherwise. So, so no matter what businesses you do, uh, people are searching for your products uh, or, or services on Google. And, and SEO uh, will help uh, your brand to get visibility to those people who are actively searching for your uh, product uh, or services. So uh, there are uh, report published uh, very recently uh, by Conductor that reveals that many marketers believe, uh, oops, so many, many marketers believes that SEO is a primary tool for, for them during this uh, downtown, downturn uh, you know, period. So in fact, uh, they have actually acknowledged that the SEO uh, was their top performing channel last year in 2019. So the purpose of this report by Conductor is to you know, examine how marketers are actually navigating their goals uh, amid the crisis. So, and, uh, and the key result of a uh, con conductor's survey was uh, corroborated by what you can see in Google Trends. Uh, as you can see, there is like a big surge in popularity of SEO in the, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, last few months. So now let's go over how, how Google works. Think of Google like a filing system, you know, in a library, you know, an enormous library that has billions uh, of books with trillions of, you know, pages. So uh, let's say uh, you wish to find something on entrepreneurship, then, then Google would search through these books and extract pages that contain your keyword or closely related words. But, but unlike this analogy, the search results on Google's are not returned in any random order, or order like the way that you see in a normal filing system. Google tries to return the most relevant result first by using a sophisticated math-based algorithms. And they're so good at it that most of us never have to click to the second page of Google search results. And in fact, there is a research by uh, Backlinko that shows only 0.78% of Google searchers click on, on results from the second page. And there's like a joke in the community, uh, SEO community, they say, if you want to hide a dead body, hide it on the second page of you know, Google search results because no one actually uh, look at the, Google, the, the second page. So, uh, to better understand how Google works, uh, there are two main terms you got to understand first. Uh, to actually obtain information, Google use crawlers, also known as uh, spiders. They actually gather publicly available information from all over the net. The spiders start with a list of URLs, uh, which they may have previously crawled or found uh, in our website sitemaps, which we call them seed pages. Then, then the spiders read top to bottom, inside out of you know, these uh, seed pages. They actually read the code base of these pages and then they follow the hyperlinks on the page and then crawl those newly discovered pages. And this process goes on and on and on and on and allowing them to build a massive index of uh, information. So these providers then bring all of this data back to Google servers to be added to what they call their uh, search uh, index. So Google goal is to sort through hundreds of trillions of web pages within the search index and find the relevant result in a fraction of a second. I'm sure you are familiar with this 
this this uh, page. So you see, it actually uh, uh, retain you the result within, uh, you know, within like a fraction of a second. So now, now let's talk about how Google actually rank pages. Nobody exactly knows how these algorithms work or the exact factors Google look at to rank a web page, you know, against another. But we know a lot of it, uh, what we call so-called, uh, you know, uh, Google ranking factors. So we're able to make some uh, educated uh, optim optimizations. So, so as an as an SEO, your job is twofold: make sure that it's easy for the spiders to understand what your page is all about, and the number two is you need to show Google that your web page is worthy of ranking in a Google search result, organic search result. So. So during this uh, webinar, uh, let's let's imagine I am a restaurant owner. Okay, so uh, I'm specialized in cooking uh, healthy food uh, based in you know Kuala Lumpur. Now, given the lockdown to cope with the closures, I am pivoting to take out and want to offer delivery services you know within Kuala Lumpur. So. I'm launching a website to accept, you know, online orders. But since my website is a brand new website, existing traffic is out of the picture. I don't have much of a budget to invest in advertising, you know, uh, either. So, so I learned about the potential of SEO and the fact that the traffic from SEO is, uh, the SEO effort is free. I want to just like give it a shot. Okay, so as this uh, fictional restaurant owner, the first step for me is uh, in my strategy towards uh, appearing the first page of Google search results is to find relevant keywords that people are searching on Google to find the kind of you know services that I offer and and how this search queries actually uh, fit into my uh, my business. So the easiest way uh, to start finding this relevant keyword is to put yourself in the shoes of uh, a potential customer. So empathy is very important. Uh, so so great SEO starts with you know uh, empathy. So you need to know your you know kind of uh, search pattern that your you know your uh, potential buyers or your prospects have. So, so as a restaurant owner, uh, I would assume that a lot of people due to, you know, lockdown and more likely even post lockdown would search for uh, meal delivery on Google, you know, to find businesses like mine, right? So that is, that is like my first, you know, my first assumption. So, but I need to validate my assumption with, with some, some data, right? So in order to uh, do, that, do that validations, I need to have, you know, tools. So uh, I, I can use uh, Google My, a Google Keyword Planner, you know, for this purpose. So Google Keyword Planner is a free tool by Google that provides, you know, rich data on uh, Google search. So, to use Google Keyword Planner, or sometimes we call it a, G, a, a GKP, you got to have a Google Ads account and you know an active uh, search campaign in order to get the most of the information that you need. So, so uh, the requirement you need to have a Google Ads account and you need to have a search ads or display ads or YouTube ads up and running. So. So I signing into my uh, Google account as that you know imaginary uh, restaurant owner. Click on tools. Uh, go to uh, uh, keyboard planner, and this is the next screen that I see. Then I would click on uh, the first options, and then you know and then enter meal delivery as a search query there, and you know and press uh, get results. 
So this is the kind of, you know, this is uh, the kind of a screen, this is the kind of result I get. But before uh, I dig deeper, I got to change the locations. Oops. I got to change the location to uh, Kuala Lumpur, right? Because that is like where my customers are. So uh, from Malaysia, I narrow down my search uh, 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 result to, you know, to Kuala Lumpur. And, and this is the kind of, you know, this is the kind of uh, data that I can get. So as you can see, there is an average 20, searcher, 20 searches for uh, these keywords per month, right? Meal delivery, 20 uh, average monthly search. So, which is not very exciting, right? So what does that mean? That means on average, based on historical data, uh, Google estimate that this query, meal, de meal delivery query, is being searched on average 20 times per month on Google. But this shouldn't, you know, this shouldn't uh, disappoint you yet. So, so now I go back to the main page and this time select get search volume and forecast. Enter my, you know, my, my, my keyboard, uh, my prime keywords, and then again, get us started. So this feature in Google Keyword Planner gives us an estimated forecast for our keyboard for future. For example, in this case, uh, during the May, Google forecast that 40, 490 times this query will be searched. So, and, and just, just note that this tool is designed for, you know, uh, it's designed for PPC advertisers. So, uh, so there are a lot of, you know, uh, features in, in the tool that won't be useful if you're just using it to find keywords uh, and the search volume uh, for SEO. So now the number is getting a little bit more exciting, but as a savvy business owner, I shouldn't just rely on one single data point. Okay, so what next? So, so what I do next is I just like grab my uh, primary keywords and, and, and go back to, you know, go back to Google and search for that uh, meal delivery to see the top 10 Google ranking for these keywords. So, so, uh, so uh, what I can do next, I can, you know, get my competitors, my imaginary competitors URL and go back to Google Keyword Planner. And this time, instead of selecting a start with uh, keywords, I will pick a start with a website tab and, you know, enter uh, the URL, uh, select the homepage and click on get results. So, so this way I would know other keywords that are driving traffic to my competitors, which I would definitely want to rank for them too. So, Mingo, we see that there is like a, there's like a search query food delivery that has uh, on average, you know, 500, 5,400, you know, monthly search. So now through uh, investigating more on our competitors, we have come across a, a new keyword that has much higher average monthly search volume. So uh, we follow the same steps that we just went through to forecast uh, in terms of, you know, in terms of projected number of search volume for this uh, uh, query. So, which as you can see, uh, it is, it is many folds higher, higher than, you know, the, uh, meal, meal delivery, uh, query. So, so by doing this, I'm ensuring that I am targeting keywords that will provide me with the most exposure for my restaurant, uh, website. So, so now, uh, we have now, uh, by now, I have a list of keywords, right? So I know that uh, food delivery is the most, you know, search uh, uh, query in a, in a Google. So now it is time to optimize my web page. 
So in the world of search engine optimization, this is called on-page SEO. Uh, since we know the keywords that people are searching for in Google, this gives us clues on the language we should use to let both Google and potential customers know what our page are all about. So, so knowing that, for example, uh, among these this, this keywords, which, which are more popular, it will help us make more, you know, a smarter a copywriting decisions. So as a restaurant owner, I want to have, you know, food delivery as the main primary keyword when I'm writing my content for my, you know, homepage. So if I were to pick, you know, meal delivery blindly as my main keyword, my website would have lost a ton of search exposure because mail deli uh, sorry, meal delivery doesn't have so much of search demand on Google. But I need to make one thing uh, very, very clear. It is very important to note that you shouldn't try to trick Google by using your keywords excessively where they don't uh, belong to. Here's an example of what you shouldn't do while you're trying to optimize your, you know, your, my, my homepage. So, so this is, you see here, I, I am just like trying to use, use uh, the same words, you know, and phrases uh, over and over and over to manipulate uh, my page ranking in Google search results. So this is like what we call it a uh, keyword stuffing. So uh, long story short, uh, it does more harm than, than Google, than, than good. So the key takeaway here, don't, you know, don't do uh, uh, keyword uh, stuffing. So, uh, so, uh, so far, uh, uh, okay. So uh, uh, for, for on-page, you know, SEO, I want to pass on, of four basic but very important tips that you can use on every web page uh, uh, you optimize. So first is to optimize your title tags and meta description. What, what are these uh, 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 terms? When you look at Google search results, uh, you will see these parts uh, in blue. And then there is, there is a text you know, right below. The top part is called your title tag, and the other part is called, you know, meta description. So the purpose of these two is to entice someone to click through your page rather than your competitors. And if people are actually clicking through your page, that tells Google that your page is likely matches the searcher's uh, intent. So, so, and as you can see here, uh, Google actually even, you know, both uh, these keywords and, you know, and similar, uh, similar terms within the uh, search result page to make them, you know, to make them stand out. So for meta description, uh, you know, you can uh, explain, you know, in a, in a couple of a brief sentences, what the page is all about rather than just putting a generic you know description that everyone is doing so so it is very important you have spent a lot of time optimize your page but you have just picked a very you know generic description then you know then people don't get in touch you know to click through and when you when they don't click through that means Google thinks that your website is not relevant to their search engine. Therefore, it is very important to have like a very punchy uh, meta descriptions and, you know, and, and, and title tag. So in our example, I can put something like, you know, for example, this. So this would make a consumer that is searching for, you know, food delivery really want to find out who this restaurant is that offers 
healthy food that is not expensive yet filling. And that way, I would probably, you know, increase the chance of click through. So there are tools like, uh, like, like this one, uh, Portent SERP uh, Preview Tool. These uh, tools actually help you visualize how your title tag and, and meta description tag will appear in the Google search result. Okay, so you can preview them first through these tools before you actually publish them. So, so why you don't, why you, why we need to do that? Because we want to uh, preview them first before actually publishing to avoid getting like truncated, like these, you know, examples, right? So, all right. So we, we learn about meta description. We learn about the titles and talked about, you know, the importance and how we can, you know, optimize them. So the second part of on-page optimization is, is the most important one. And that is actually, that is, that is the actual content on the page. So uh, for a typical restaurant homepage, I, as the, you know, fictional business owner, uh, I might have some images of the foods, a short, you know, about us uh, section, the menu, some, you know, some testimonials from happy customers, maybe photos of the chefs, photos of the kitchens, you know, their workstation, you know, etc. But without overly complicating things, I would want to use my primary keyword phrase in the main headline, uh, which we often refer it to as H1 tag. So in this example, uh, so delivery has the food delivery in its uh, main headline. And if you go and look at the code base, you would see that uh, you would see that the, they have this, you know, this this headline is wrapped with uh, with wrapped with H1, which is you know, which is a HTML you know markup. So and and as you can see, they are not you know uh, out of a blue appearing on the first page of Google search results. They know you know what they are actually doing. So. Unlike you know a company like uh, like uh, Food Panda, which they don't have that food delivery that has the highest you know amount of search volume uh, directly in you know in the uh, headline. So and 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 uh, and perhaps uh, that is like the reason why Food Panda hasn't you know actually actually has not ranked uh, you know on top. Uh, uh, for this particular, you know, search query. So as a SEO, your job is to help Google best identify your page as being relevant to the user search query. So that is your, you know, that is your job. You need to make sure that your, you know, content on the page, your headline matches the search intent of, you know, uh, or the searcher's intents uh, 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 clearly. Okay, so 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 as you can see here, uh, this 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 the fact that of uh, food panda doesn't have that in the main he headline, uh, a might be a reason why there's not so you know uh, high up on the first page of uh, Google uh, search result. So. I am still, you know, as the as the uh, business owner, I am still working on, you know, the content of my, you know, home pages, right? So, so we we just like uh, understood about H1 tag. Now we want to move on, you know, to other content on the on the page, right? So, so what I do next is I go to I go back to the keywords uh, report again in Google Keyword Planners to check on other keywords uh, my you know, competitor is ranking and see if there are any other keyword idea that I can you know, use to help Google better understand what is my uh, homepage all about. So, so I just need to uh, uh, enter the URL of my you know, uh, imaginary competitors uh, and, you know, and then I can 
see some relevant, see some other relevant, you know, keywords uh, in here. So, so now I have other, you know, keywords uh, idea. So while I'm writing the copy for my homepage, I might want to keep these ideas, you know, uh, in mind and, you know, and then sprinkle them wherever it actually makes sense and reads naturally to my visitor without keyword, you know, uh, stuffing. So, so now let's, you know, let's take this example one, you know, one step further. So let's say that uh, my, you know, a fictional business is growing, right? I have more shops working, you know, long, more de delivery on the roads. And, and there are a lot of requests from my customers for uh, to offer, you know, cake, cake delivery. So, so I, you know, I decide to, uh, you know, I decide to add cakes to my menu too. So, so now I can do, uh, I can now go, uh, go about the optimization, optimization in two ways. The first is just like trying to rank my homepage for both deliver food delivery service and you know and take delivery you know keywords which is not actually a wise way so your each home page so each web page has to be optimized on only one single you know keywords so that is like the best practices so instead of instead of just like ranking for uh, for both uh, both terms uh, uh, i would create a you know a new page that is optimized only for, you know, cake delivery. And as you can see here, this keyword is being searched an average 1,600, you know, per month. So, so uh, that takes us to another aspect of on-page SEO optimizations uh, that I am sharing, you know, today, which is the URL structure. So the last things I have to do is to include my, you know, primary keyword, uh, which in this case is, you know, uh, cake delivery KL in my URL for my new page that I'm trying to optimize and trying to rank for. So my final uh, URL will look like this, right? Uh, and I'm using, you know, uh, hyphens or, or dash to actually separate each, you know, each keyword. Make sure you don't use underline. So, so, by now, we have covered, you know, the basic on-page SEO best practices. And if you do this for all your, you know, pages correctly, I can assure you that you're months ahead of your, a lot of your, you know, competitors. You know, we just look at the Google search results, right? And we see lots of big companies doesn't follow that kind of, you know, best practices. And yet they're appearing on the first page of Google search results. So if you come up with a new business and, and, you know, and do all these best practices, you would definitely can, you know, outrank them uh, in, in a very short period of, you know, time. So uh, the next uh, part and arguably the most important piece of uh, ranking high on Google is off-page uh, SEO. So uh, off-page uh, SEO, often refers to link building and, and link building is a process of getting you know other websites to link to your web pages basically links act as words or other people you know or other people watching you know for your websites so so when 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 someone give you a, a link it works uh, in a similar way that you would refer or send your, you know, uh, website traffic, you know, to them. And you won't do this, you know, unless you really trust them, right? You don't just like randomly give link to people. So, and this is like, you know, the, uh, an illustration showing how, you know, backlinks works. But the question here is, uh, the question here is, are all links uh, created equal? The answer is, in general, the more quality backlinks you get from relevant pages, the higher you rank in Google search results. So, 
So I'm putting, you know, the emphasis here on the word, you know, quality, because there are a lot of different types of links you can get from, you know, social media networks, you can get from online forums, you know, comment sections, local or niche directories, or, you know, or editorial pieces. So, so, so to just, to just name for you, but, but if you think about it, uh, a place like a forum, virtually, in a place like a forum, virtually everyone can place a link. So a link from a forum will likely hold less value than a link for, you know, someone else uh, uh, blog. So, so uh, but to be clear, uh, all these, you know, links, regardless of, you know, where they are, they all hold some kind of value, but probably not as much as, you know, the editorial link would. So, so, okay. So the main way to get links from other people's blog is through something that uh, we as SEO often refer to uh, outreach. So, and outreach exactly the way, you know, it sounds. You are contacting people, to ask them for a link to your website. But you cannot just like email someone and be like, yo, I need a backlink, hook it up, right? It doesn't work this way. So there are three things that you need, to, uh, uh, you need in place in order to make sure uh, your SEO outreach campaigns are more successful. So first, you need to reach out to people who are actually interested and care about what you do. So having a good reason to contact them, you know, uh, is also a must. And you also need to offer them uh, something that benefits them, you know, in exchange of the favor that they might do. So let's go for some, you know, example. So, what was the first? We need to identify people who are actually interested in what, what, what we do. So the easiest way in the context of uh, link building is to identify websites that have already linked your competitors. So those people who have already given a link to your competitors, they would definitely be, you know, not definitely, but they are more likely to be interested in, you know, in in what you do. So. So how can we find out what are the websites that have given link to our competitors is using a tool like, you know, uh, uh, Hrefs uh, backlink checker tools. All you need to do is enter your competitor's domain and, you know, and, and, and narrow it down to the exact URL because we want to understand what are the uh, sources actually given backlink to their homepage. So, so, and then, you know, and then press uh, check uh, backlinks and, you know, voila, you see that on the left side, you can see the website that are linked to, you know, my imaginary uh, competitor. And on the right side, you can see which pages they actually link to and the context of, you know, and the context of, you know, each link. So uh, you need to, you know, you need to, uh, I, as, as that, you know, business owner that I want to get my, my website to rank higher, I have to scroll through all this search results and look for, and look for uh, a content uh, tag. It, since I, since remember what I said, I said the editorial links holds uh, more, you know, more value uh, compared to the other source of you know, type of backlink. So so I need to dig in and, you know, and try to find uh, someone that who has, uh, you know, already linked to my competitors and, you know, might be interested to hear my, you know, story too. So bingo, I can easily find a, a website that has done a write up and mentioned my, you know, my, my, uh, uh, my competitors. So. So now we have uh, found, find uh, someone that might be, uh, might care about us or might be interested in what we do. So let's check that off our, you know, checklist uh, 
for successful you know, outreach. So now we have a prospect. So the next step is to contact that blogger and let them know that my company also deliver food in you know KL and why you should be uh, why I should be as that you know restaurant owner on the list. So so now we also have a good reason to contact them because we have something relevant uh, for her piece you know too. So now we are actually fulfilling the checkbook checkbox uh, number two as well. So but just as a side note. It doesn't mean that the blogger with, you know, will include you in a piece with a beautiful backlink. So uh, as a general rule of thumb, the better uh, the excuse you come up with to contact the author, the better your chance will be get to actually receiving that link. So uh, offering, you know, uh, offering a guest post is also a, a a good way to actually get you know get get backlinks you know from from your uh, you know from uh, from whoever uh, in, in in your niche maybe a media publisher you know and etc. So so you know as as a restaurant owner you know I I would reach out to you know several uh, publishers you know I can you know pro, uh, reach out to several publishers you know and propose a guest posting you know. Uh, you know, on, on topic, on different topics. So an example can be like, you know, uh, best safety practices for delivery and takeout in the COVID, you know, 19 age. So that is a very, you know, relevant kind of, you know, uh, topic that can, you know, help me get like uh, published, uh, you know, faster. And then there's like a backlink to my website and that would help me with my ranking, right? So, Hi, Amir. Just a quick reminder, five more minutes. Uh, okay, sure, sure. Yeah. So, you know, as you can see here, these are like the screenshots that, you know, uh, the kind of, I get, you know, guest post offer uh, left and right for current sake. So in exchange, like for a link. So, I, I mean, this request would get accelerated if your website gets a lot of, you know, backlink and you get like a good rank in the Google search result. You see all this, guest post i get you know even earlier today i got another email offering me a guest post so that is like the kind of practice that is being done you know frequently out there for people you know to get uh, a backlink so another another tip is to start uh blogging now by blogging i don't mean writing about you know uh the look of the new you know signboard that I just like, you know, uh, bought for my shops or the new apron that I bought for my, you know, shops. By blogging, I'm referring to providing practical content that would help your prospective customers solve their, you know, uh, problems. Content that provides practical value is one of the key factors uh, to, to, to success. So people don't just share funny, you know, cat videos news you know or emotional stories they also share things that help you know others and 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 the same goes for you know acquiring backlink people are more likely to link to your content if it's helpful you know uh, uh, actionable and solves you know real uh, problem so in fact companies who actually engage in blogging activities receives 97 percent backlink to their, you know, to their sites. So in your blog post, you can also plug your, you know, your product or services like this example. And from there, you can get, you know, traffic to your more, you know, important pages. So look guys, uh, I cannot uh, emphasize enough how much a blog can help you boost your SEO efforts. So it is a great way to get, you know, ahead of your uh, competitors. I've been in this game, for longer than you do so but but they are just like just just like targeting you know those obvious keywords and everyone doing it so another factor uh, google consider when it comes to ranking your page versus your competitor is the usability of the web page google wants to show results that keep their searchers happy and this goes beyond the right content for the query so there are a couple of, you know, confirmed rankings factor related to usability. So 
one of it is you know one of it is lower speeds so so load page speed is very you know is very important uh for your uh, seo uh ranking so so But you see here, uh, Google has come out and said, you know, using a page, uh, a page speed, it is, you know, in mobile search ranking. So there are, you know, there are tools out there, like, you know, page speed inside Pingdom, GT metrics, you know, that can help you uh, actually understand your loading speeds and also uh, what is your performance score. And then, you know, you can actually, they give you also recommendations how you can improve your websites. And also mobile friendliness. Uh, is also another very important uh, uh, user experience or technical SEO. So your website must appear correctly no matter what device your visitor on and no matter what browsers they are using. The, this, this is often, you know, referred to as a responsive design, you know, as well. So, and, you know, and, and it is very important, you know, Google actually said that we prominently use the mobile version of your content for indexing and ranking. And as you can see, this is like from from you know from 2019, all the new websites are mobile first indexed by default. So all of these you know things and many more factors can be summarized into you know the user experience factor as well. So Google wants to show to retain results that are both relevant and provide a solid user experience for its user. So, and you know, if you want to check how, if your website is mobile friendly, you can just like Google mobile friendly test tool by Google. All you need to do is just like uh, enter your URL and you know, and it tells you how, 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 if your mobile page is your page is mobile friendly or not. So there, there you have it guys. Uh, hope you have fun, found this, you know, action items. Uh, I shared with you useful and uh, I hope you you guys you know go back and start you know optimizing your page you you saw that you I'm sure you've witnessed that it's not that much of you know uh, uh, it, it is not that sophisticated so as what you may have you know perceived so uh, you know I'm always happy to help you can find me on LinkedIn you can find me on uh, on Twitter any question uh, you know feel free to reach out to me you know as well Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amir, for the insightful presentation once again. And uh, yes, so if uh, you guys have any questions, I will share now. You can see uh, the link. Yes, so if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat box on the right hand side if you have access through Google Hangouts or if you're you're watching this through Facebook Live, please send them through uh, messages chat or write them in the comments section on uh, Facebook. So we have one question. And does running ads on the website help with building page authority? Uh, running ads uh, help you? That's a good question. So the thing here, uh not you know actually so i mean not directly indirectly can possibly why i say that because when you run ads for your websites you 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 get more exposure you know for your uh website your website would be seen by more you know people and when your website is out there and being seen by many people, the chance of them giving you a backlink would actually increase. And therefore, it actually indirectly might help you to get that backlink, and that would help you to get that uh, domain authority that you want. Okay, thank you for your answer. Um, so far, it looks like uh, that uh, the presentation was very self-explanatory and uh, not a lot of questions are coming in, but uh, we're still here if any of you have. Okay, so there is one question. We'll have to wait until the person types it. Okay.
how do I code for SEO if I have no coding knowledge? Okay, that's that's a good question. So, you know, to, you don't, you know, you don't really need coding actually to get started with SEO, especially if you're using, you know, a content management system like you know, like WordPress, like you know, like Vix. So, like, uh, there are tons of them, you know, out there. So. The benefit of this content management systems, like, you know, like WordPress, it actually comes with a lot of, you know, plugins that, that makes it very easy to actually do a lot of, you know, SEO works without, without having any knowledge of, you know, coding. So if you don't have the, any, any knowledge of coding, what I suggest is, uh, give, you know, content management, uh, website like WordPress a, a try. Uh, it's going to be your, you know, your, uh, uh, SEO, uh, uh, is going to be, you know, changing the code, you know, uh, modifying, you know, the H1 tags, you know, uh, meta description, all tags would be, uh, would be as easy as a cake because you have like plugins that is actually de developed to, you know, to deliver that kind of, uh, 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 purpose. Okay, thank you for your answer. And the next question is, is WordPress, will, will, would WordPress do the coding for the person? No, no, th there's no coding required. So once you, uh, you know, once you have your WordPress up and running, yes, you need to know how WordPress works. You need to understand how, you know, how, how to set up your website through WordPress, uh, which doesn't require any coding, to be honest. Uh, once you uh, set up your WordPress, then, you know, for example, if, let's just like assume you want to update your meta description or your title tags. Uh, all you need to do is search for that, you know, in the, in the plugin repository of WordPress, and then you would be offered like a bunch of, you know, tools. All you need to do is just like click and install that plugin into your WordPress. And now you have a placeholder to input your, you know, your, your meta descriptions or your title tag. So in this process, you don't have, you don't need any knowledge of coding. So WordPress has made, you know, uh, website development, uh, a breeze now. So you don't really need to have any background in coding to, you know, to actually set up your website. And so. Uh, when it comes to plugins, I just like read, uh, Elizabeth, the questions. So, so the plugin, you know, uh, rank math is, is one of the best one. Uh, there is like, but, but it is a little bit advanced. Maybe you want to give Yoast, which is like Y O A S T a try. So that is also you can use. Uh, if you don't, if you if you don't get it, it's just like reach out to me and and uh, uh, if I if I couldn't, uh, it is like Y O A S T. But if you still have a question, just hit me on LinkedIn or Twitter, and I would share the link, you know, with you there. Okay. So another question from Facebook comes that would hashtags help in promoting our page to provide services or blogs? Examples for travel hashtags in Japan. So that is more like a, uh, you know, hashtag, there's no actually correlation between uh, SEO on page or off page SEO uh, with hashtag. But again, hashtag is, I'm talking about the direct, you know, direct correlation. But again, hashtag can help you, you know, can help you uh, get more exposure maybe for the blog post that you have, you know, created. For example, you have done a, a blog post on top places to visit, you know, uh, in, in Tokyo. Okay. And you publish it on your websites and then you go and publish that on your Facebook and you accompany that post with a hashtag, right? So then hashtag can potentially bring more, you know, visibility and you, and, and exposure to that post on social media and the more exposure to that post can result in, you know, can result in more, uh, 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 you know, exposures and, and, and visibility and the visibility can put, can probably result in, you know, in a backlinks. 
So that is the kind of, you know, relationship that I can build between these two. They are not, as I said, directly related, you know, to one another. But it helps your, you know, blog post to actually uh, uh, expand, you know, in reach through the social media like Facebook or Instagram. Okay, so another question is, we have heard of the advantages of SEO. What would be the cons of SEO? Uh, uh, there is actually <laughs> no uh, cons to be honest, as far as I can remember. So why, you know, why, uh, why, sh why shouldn't you, you know, appear in the first page of Google search result for a, for a relevant, you know, for a relevant search query? So I don't see any, uh, any, any disadvantage to that unless you are, you know, spending a lot of time optimizing your page for a wrong keyboard, right? And then you spend a lot of, you know, time and resources to create a content, optimize the content, but the kind of traffic that you're getting to your website are the kind of tr traffic that are not relevant to your business, okay? So, uh, for, uh, I don't know, for example, back to, back to the example of the food delivery, if we had like, you know, we had like, uh, you know, uh, for example, Food Panda, maybe, you know, is trying to, tar trying to, uh, uh, target like frozen food, you know, delivery, right? And they don't, you know, for example, offer by, by mistake or by any chance. Now they're appearing on the first page of Google search results for maybe, maybe frozen food or maybe for diet food. And they don't offer that kind of, you know, uh, 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 foods. Okay. Then they are getting like traffic that, that they are not relevant. That's like what we say, the searcher's intent uh, doesn't get matched with the kind of content that you provide on your homepage. And, you know, and that might send you a wrong signal. You're getting a lot of traffic from search engine, but those traffic doesn't actually convert to a sales or convert to order online, you know, uh, 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 for you. So that is something that off the top of my head, uh, I can, you know, I can come up with. Okay, thank you for your answer. And the next question is, what is the recommended host of web page for Malaysian business? <sighs> that is like, uh, you know, I, like what I said, uh, that's a very good question. The, you know, the, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the page of speed has actually direct, you know, relationship, uh, direct relationship with the kind of, you know, hosting that you provide the hosting that you subscribe to, right? So if your uh, hosting provider doesn't, you know, is not is not providing like a, a cutting edge hosting technology, that would affect your loading speed. And as a result, your SEO, your rank would be uh, implicated. So what I suggest is um, maybe you can consider this a hack, a use, one of those tools that I shared with you earlier that tells you what is the loading uh, speeds of each website. Remember, like, you know, GT metrics or ping dump. Before you actually uh, commit to purchase, go grab the URL of the hosting provider and enter it into those tools and see how fast the pages load uh, uh, for, for those, you know, hosting providers. So that gives you an indication of how, how good, you know, the service provider, hosting provider is. If you see it takes like forever to load, then, you know, then that gives you an indication of that the, the kind of, you know, technology that the hosting provide is not up to some quality and therefore might not be a good choice, you know, for you. I cannot really recommend any because I'm actually not using uh, any, any, any local, uh, service hosting service provider for any of my uh, businesses and my clients. So, so sorry about that, but that is just like maybe uh, a, a tips that can help you uh, understand which one is better over another. Okay. And uh, so another question is, where do we get the set metadata uh, description and title tags for Google? So, uh, okay, okay. Uh, that that's a good question. So. Uh, if you have, if you are, 
using uh, like what I said, content management system. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen uh, with you guys. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit troublesome. It's already uh, shared, okay. so you can continue. You can exit uh, the uh, presentation and. Uh... Okay, so I can, you know, I can stop the present because I am actually sharing one tab. So, yes, uh, so you hold can on. Exit the, you can exit full screen and show and switch the tab. Okay, sure. Let me just like do it now. Okay, so do you see my screen now? Not yet. Uh, is it loading or? Not loading and can't see it. Uh, hold on. Present now. So I am, um, I mean, okay, sure. How about now? Can you see it now? Yes, now it's loading. Uh, okay. Okay. So can you see my screen now? Yes. Uh, hold on. Let me see if this is like a good example to show you the meta descriptions. So if you're using like content management system, like WordPress, this is like the kind of, this is the kind of, you know, uh, a backend that you have, right? So this is the kind of backend that you have. So for example, let's just like see. I want to, you know, I want to uh, optimize my, you know, my uh, homepage. Okay. I just like go and find my homepage here. So you see here, I can just like press edit. So, and, uh, so sorry, it's a little bit of slow here. So yes, okay, so this is the page. Uh, let me see here. So if I had like, uh, let me just like see if I have like a Yoast plugin on. Let me see. So these are, remember, these are like all the plugins that I just like mentioned. You can install, you know, multiple plugins based on whatever, you know, needs that you have. So I don't have, you know, I don't have a, a Yoast plugin here. So because this is like a demo uh, test website, let me just like go to a live website. Uh, now, this is like one of uh, one of my clients, uh, you know, this money changer, Altam Mitch. So uh, true currency. Uh, let me just like check out here to see if I have that. Like I'm sure I have some uh, SEO plugins here. Just yeah, uh, is a maybe... quick question you can answer. Meanwhile, does yes. result of search depend on the locality of users? Uh, definitely, yes. So that is a, a good question. So when Google trying to rank you uh, versus you know versus another of your competitor, it actually uh, uh, it actually send you know show you content that actually closer to your you know to your lo locality. For example, if you are you know living in PJ and you search for food delivery, uh, Google actually look at that uh, location as a signal to show the website that has like, you know, uh, uh, that, you know, PJ delivery, food delivery in, you know, in the meta title uh, or, or title tag or, you know, or the headline. So that is also very important. So how Google knows uh, you're, I'm sure you know how Google knows your location. So you actually allow uh, the browser to actually detect your location. So that is a good question. And uh, and yes, it actually, uh, because con 
contextualized contextualized signal. Yes. Okay. So now, as you can see here, I have this um, plugin called uh, Rank uh, Math. Here, I'm just like trying to find. Okay, let me just like, go to one of my pages. So let me see if I have rank. Oopsie. Do I have? Oh, I'm still on. On. Sorry, I'm still on my demo. Okay, let me just like go to my plugin. Uh, let me just close these pages to avoid you know confusion. Let me go to a page. So uh, I let me see if I have Yoast or yes, I have Yoast and I have you know uh, Rank Math. Rank Math is a little bit you know uh, uh, advanced. I would share with you with with Yoast. Okay, so I activated Yoast now on this website. So now I go and open my homepage. Okay, so this is my this is the homepage of this website. Uh, sorry, okay, I mean, a quick question. How long might it take for you to explain this part? So that's going to take another maybe uh, one or two minutes. Okay, so I will quickly then say, like, everybody, thank you for joining. So the ones who are still interested in finding out the answer to the question, please stay in. But the others, uh, please fill out the feedback form that I've included in the chat box and in the comment section on Facebook. And then you will access you have you will gain access to the links for the recording and also the presentation. And if you have any questions towards iTrain about our courses, then uh, please email them to info at itrain.com.mi or learn more about our company at our website itrain.com.mi or follow us on Facebook to get the latest updates. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you see here, I went and, and found my homepage. So, and I have Yoast plugin actually activated on my, uh, uh, on my WordPress. So now it is as easy as this. Okay. So you have this input fields that you can easily, you know, uh, uh, adjust. So for example, this particle money changes the title tag or, uh, sometimes we call it SEO title. It is actually this. You can easily, you know, edit this and, you know, and save it. So that is how you update your title tags. And again, you have the same, you have the same placement. You have the similar placement for meta descriptions. And then, you know, and then you just like type in your meta, meta description, you know, and save. So now if I go back to uh, this, uh, this money, this client website, uh, you would, I can just like uh, create, uh, I can just uh, right click, go to uh, inspect element. And if I search for, you know, meta description, you see here, that is like the meta description. So I have the control over this line of code through my, you know, through my, uh, uh, your, your uh, plugin. And same, you know, applies to your SEO title. So now if I search for a title, title, so you see here again, I have like a title tag that is again controllable by here. There's like a Twitter uh, and then title tag. So you see here, that is like a title tag. And you see here it's being controlled by uh, uh, my my rank math plugins, and now I have activated uh, the yours. I can also control it from here here too. So you see here, there's no knowledge of coding required for you to update your you know your uh, title tag, your meta description. You know, if you go for content management uh, tools like you know like like uh, WordPress, the plugin actually helps you uh, set all these things. Uh, easily okay so uh, hopefully I, 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 I'm hoping that that was the answer to your questions 
Yes, let's hope so too. So yes, once again, thank you, Amir, for uh, taking your time today to present. And uh, oh, so there are no more questions. And uh, right. yes, yeah, so thank you. Thank you very, very much, everybody, who joined in. And do stay safe in these crazy times. And uh, yes. yes, wish you all the best. Yes. Thank you, guys. Bye.